All right, so what we have here is a Speed Queen model AWN432 SP113 TW04. And as you can see right there, it's dripping, it's leaking a little bit. So what that is is the flow valve, the control valve that comes into the back of the washing machine from your main supply from the house. Water's obviously always in those as long as you've got that valve open there, which it is right now. And this uh, valve over time just has developed a leak. So when we checked to move stuff into the dryer, we had a little puddle of water and the clothes were still soaked. So we're going to go to fix that. It's not too bad. And uh, we'll move along. First thing first, you want to turn your water supply off. Stop that flow of water and also not make a mess when you go to undo the hoses. And you also want to unplug the washing machine just uh, because you are going to be playing with some electrical stuff here. So it's always a good idea to unplug it so you don't get shocked. All right, next up, we'll pull the washer out so we can go to access to the back. Another concern, depending on how your washer is uh, piped in here, is the discharge hose. So I'm uh, kind of running out of room here. I need to pull that further out. So that's another thing that'll have to come out of the uh, out of the pipe. Again, your house may be set up differently than mine, so that'll be something you'll have to look out for. But if you need to remove that, that'll uh, need to come out too. Also a good time to look behind your washing machine and your dryer here and see what clothes you can find that you may have randomly dropped. So looks like I got a t-shirt back there. Let's see what that is. Yep, that's a, uh, a dusty, nasty t-shirt, so we'll uh, maybe use this as the first test after we replace this valve. All right, so I got the dryer pulled out, or excuse me, the washing machine pulled out here, and these are the hoses going into it. Now, this is, might be a good time to inspect your hoses, especially these are steel braided, but if you have regular rubber hoses, they will, over time, wear out. Uh, I don't know what the life expectancy is of them several years, but now is a good time to make sure you don't have any bubbles or anything going on that could uh, pop your hose if you leave that valve open. And one of these hoses pops while you're not home. Well, guess guess what? You're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a lot of water in your house. So, but simple connections right here, just regular garden hose connections. We'll unscrew both of those. You want to get a bucket and a sponge here because you're gonna lose some water. Make sure again that you've turned that water off before you go to unscrew these. But we'll go ahead and get that bucket set up, get these hoses disconnected, and continue on with the uh, removal. That valve is right here. You can see that blue. That's where that valve is. All right, so sorry about the shadow here, but uh, obviously cramped quarters. So you'll see here this one single screw here is going to hold this whole contraption in. There is a, uh, a place to use a flathead screwdriver, but I'm going to prefer to use a nut driver here. So it's about 5 16 of an inch. Get on that. Unscrew that. All right, and you can see that kind of just pops in there. And what should happen now is that'll let me to lift this up a little bit and take it back you got two tabs down here that you got to clear so kind of bend it in a little bit clear those and then this whole thing will come out all right and you can see you got a hose up here electrical connections down here looking at this guy this is going to go and look just like that show you from the side here all right, so there's that whole contraption, just one water outlet there. And these are the two valves with the electrical power going to them, hot and cold. And this is what uh, in there is what I believe is leaking. So we're gonna go ahead, pull these wires out, remove that one hose clamp there with a flathead screwdriver, just a Jubilee clip and get, uh, get this thing swapped out. All right, you wanna try and pay attention where your electrical connections are going. What I like to do is kind of do a one-for-one -one swap. So that's the orientation of the new one. So I'll disconnect this red leads, plug it right back in to the bottom here, disconnect the white lead, plug it right back into the top here, just so I don't lose track. All right, so that hose came out just fine. Note here that the, the edge of this, and again, sorry for the shadow, it's really bad. Note here the edge of this is kind of knurled, so you are gonna have to uh, worry about that. You don't, you want, I used a screwdriver there, as you can see, to, to get this away from the hose, but you gotta be careful to make sure that you're not gonna tear that hose or anything unless you have a replacement for it. And obviously there's gonna be residual water and all. All right, so you got the plate out, everything's disconnected. You got one, one quarter inch sheet metal screw up there that holds this whole thing in. So we'll go ahead, again, using a nut driver, there's no slot in it this time. 
use that one quarter inch nut driver, pull that whole thing out. That'll remove that and then we want to put the new one in in the same place. All right, and then it pushes like that, kind of slide locks in a little bit. Get this out though, this is trash. Got the new one here. Again, watch your orientation. Screw hole will help you align it there. There's only one way that screw is going to go in. So we got that guy in there. Like that again, lift it up to lock it in place. Put this screw back in. Now you're cutting plastic when you're putting this screw back in. So it might be a little difficult because you're, you're grooving that plastic and cutting the threads into it for the first time. All right, put that in there nice and tight. And we'll get the hose. Make sure the Jubilee clip is still on there. You haven't lost it and that it will uh, stay on there. So you can obviously tighten it back up. Put that on the hose. Put that on the new valve. All right, if you can see that, make sure you get it fully seated and flush up just like it was when you took it apart. Get that Jubilee clip in about the same spot. You'll see impressions on the on the rubber hose left over. I feel like I'm in a horror movie with the shadows and everything. But you'll see the impressions from the in the rubber hose from the Jubilee clip. Go ahead and tighten that down. You don't have to go real, real tight with this thing. Just trying to prevent some leakage. Those, those ribs in there, whatever you want to call it, the knurling will help prevent some leakage too. This is also conveniently a quarter inch, so it might be easier for you to use your quarter inch nut driver. All right, so that's it. So the hose is on, looks good, tight. Wires are in the same way they came out, looks good, they're tight. This is the little, I'm going to put this guy back in. All right, you can see this thing's kind of in a little bit of a tension here, so you got to kind of pull and then find that hole. All right, but once you grab it, it's all good. All right, that's really it to replace that valve. We'll hook our hoses back up, turn the water on, get it ready, and we'll go around and see if it still leaks. We've got the hoses reconnected. We'll turn the water on here just to do a gross check to make sure I don't have any leakage back here. Oh, yep, we've got quite a bit. All right, so that's not cool. We'll figure that out. All right, so the hoses kind of float inside these valves here. So you just kind of want to twist them and, and kind of wiggle them like that and make sure if this isn't as tight as it can be, it won't seal this up and this will flop around and that's what happened that time. So I was able to turn this around and kind of let it go and I was able to tighten it fully. So no leakage back here, that's good. We'll go ahead and push everything back in and we'll come around front and see if I've got any leakage in the front. All right, it's been about two or three minutes since I uh, pushed it back in. I did dry that area before I put the valve in and you can see there's no evidence of leakage. So uh, not too bad for about 40 bucks and maybe 45 minutes of my time. Now I will say that I've done some home repairs in the past. I uh, restore old cars as a hobby, so there's some experience level there, but for about 40 bucks for the new part and uh, an hour, hour and a half of your time, you can see that it's probably not too difficult and well within the capabilities of somebody that's got a screwdriver and a, and a socket set laying around. Save yourself the service call, save yourself a couple hundred bucks. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Cheers.